In February, the world watched as Russian troops marched into Ukraine, intending to annex the country. The Russian government's decision has had a variety of ramifications for Ukraine, Russia, and the rest of the world. Ukrainians have been forced to evacuate from their homes to seek refuge in neighboring nations. International organizations have imposed sanctions and bans on Russia, but that has not prevented Russia from its ongoing siege. As a result of the conflict, many people around the world are suffering. A significant number of people have flooded Ukraine's neighboring countries, such as Poland and Hungary. On the other hand, the drastic rise in fuel and gas prices has been a major economic adjustment by individuals all across the world. Oil prices have reached an all-time high due to speculation of an approaching shortage. In an effort to stop the siege, powerful countries like UK and US have initiated a number of bans and sanctions against Russia. The EU, UK, and the US have banned Russian flights from their airspace. Imports and exports of certain Russian goods have ceased. Furthermore, they targeted individuals known as the oligarchs by implementing sanctions on their businesses and properties abroad. All these measures were enacted to discourage the Russian leader from advancing with the war. Unfortunately, these bans and sanctions have been futile. Also, the EU fears that in a bid to retaliate, Russia could abruptly stop all inflows of gas to its nations. Berlin, which is attempting to get rid of Russian energy as quickly as possible, has been wary about sanctioning Russian fossil fuels, claiming that doing so would have a negative impact on its people and economy. Every day in Europe, a large amount of money is spent on Russian gas, thereby funding Russia's military takeover. As a result, Europe feels that if Russia's gas supply is restricted, the country will be unable to continue fighting. The EU is concerned about the possibility of a gas supply interruption. This is due to Russia's position as one of the world's biggest oil producers. Each day, the country exports around 5 million barrels of crude oil. Russia provides about 8% of the United Kingdom's total oil requirements. Furthermore, a significant portion of its exports is sent to Europe. The supply of gas is extremely vital to the continent. It fuels power plants, heavy industry, and home heating across the region. The German Chancellor told Germany's parliament that a sudden ban on Russian energy imports would put Germany and the rest of Europe in danger. However, the European Union does not want to depend on Russian gas at this time and is on the lookout for oil sources outside of Russia. The European Commission introduced Repower EU, a plan of action to make Europe independent from Russian fossil fuels before 2030. This goal has two supporting objectives to diversify gas supplies by increasing pipelines and LNG imports from non-Russian suppliers and to accelerate Europe's move away from fossil fuels. Germany has already released a plan to stop all Russian oil imports by mid-2024. The EU and US have pledged to help increase supplies of LNG to European countries by the end of 2022. Germany is also looking to Qatar and Norway to supplement its oil needs. The International Energy Agency has published an action plan for Europe to reduce its reliance on Russian gas in the next year. The IEA stated in a new statement that EU members should not sign any new contracts with Russia and should replace Russian gas supplies with other sources. The official statement looked at accelerating the use of new wind and solar projects while maximizing power generation from bioenergy and nuclear power. The plan also involved encouraging a temporary thermostat reduction of 1 degree Celsius by consumers. With these and more listed initiatives, the EU is hopeful that it can achieve its ambitious goal. A committee of experts from the German National Academy of Sciences Leopoldina estimated in March that a short-term suspension in Russian gas supplies would have significant but manageable consequences. They predicted a 0.5% to 3% drop in Germany's gross domestic product, compared to a 4.5% drop in the first year of the pandemic. 
According to a report issued by the Institute for Economic Research in Germany, a similar reduction in output and a further rise in inflation, which had already reached 5.5% in February, is expected. Because there has never been a ban of this magnitude, the Institute emphasized that any assumptions are speculative. Challenges The issue of infrastructure is one roadblock to the EU goal. Pipelines connecting the EU to other gas-supplying countries must be expanded. Building new pipelines in a short amount of time will be difficult and require a long time to finish. The Bruegel Research Group has suggested that Europe will have to revive its coal plants that have been closed due to environmental concerns. Germany is preparing to extend both coal and nuclear plants that were due to shut at the end of this year. Switching to coal will be more expensive and will retard all the efforts that have been put into climate change. More liquefied natural gas would result in a $78 billion expense for EU countries to refill gas storage facilities this summer. That's about six times the estimated $11 billion spent in prior years, a price too high for many industrial enterprises who were already grumbling about rising energy costs before the Ukraine conflict. Qatar has been in the spotlight ever since Germany began seeking alternate oil suppliers. Qatar, on the other hand, has long-standing relationships with other Asian countries. This means that the oil-rich country may have to redirect part of its gas from Asia to Germany in order to meet Germany's demand. This will be a contract breach that could lead to compensation claims. Lithuanians' Independence In spite of these obvious challenges, Lithuanian authorities on April 1st announced that they would no longer rely on Russia for gas. In 2014, Lithuanians opened their own LNG terminal in Klaipeda, and this infrastructure allows Lithuanian to be independent. Money paid to Russia is used by the Kremlin administration to fund the destruction of Ukrainian cities and attacks on peaceful inhabitants, said Lithuanian President Bitanas Nosida. Lithuanian officials are hopeful that other EU countries can do the same. Concerns the EU has started scouting for alternative supply stations for its gas needs. However, the EU must consider if oil-rich countries will be willing or even able to supply gas to satisfy Europe's long-term energy demands. For many years, the EU has been the foreigner of clean energy. In the Paris Agreement, the EU committed to reducing emissions by at least 55%. If Russia should halt the supply of gas immediately, the EU will have to turn to coal to supplement its energy needs. When this happens, the Paris Agreement targets will be delayed and possibly be ignored in the long run. With time, European countries can build infrastructure to receive gas from other sources. But can this be done within a short period? 